So uh, probability logic was, uh, one can say, an immediate offspring of, of Gödel's second incompleteness theorem. So I uh, want to begin with uh, recalling briefly the origins of, of probability logic as a subject. And of course, the idea of uh, treating probability opera, uh, probability formula, probability as a modality is due to Gödel himself, although uh, a couple of years after uh, his incompleteness paper. Uh, there he considered uh, uh, the idea, well, his goal was in fact to give uh, an interpretation of uh, intuitionistic propositional logic in terms of uh, uh, probability interpretation. And he uh, gave a translation of intuitionistic logic into model logic S4, and then remarked, uh, that was just one and a half pages uh, note, remarked that one can, uh, try to interpret modality as uh, uh, his formula expressing probability, Bev, uh, the Weisbarkeit formula. However, the logic will be different. And uh, uh, in this way, uh, intuitionistic logic cannot be faithfully translated. And then he also came to uh, uh, the idea of discussing modality in in, in context of, uh, in discussing probability in context of model logic in his unpublished lecture at Tilsel's uh, seminar, where he in fact uh, somewhat mysteriously hinted that there are, uh, so his way of thinking was that since uh, in order to prove consistency of say piano arithmetic, we need means transcending piano arithmetic. So one can consider different, different ideas. One idea was, uh, uh, he was already aware by that time of the Gensens approach. Uh, second idea was uh, using the finite types, which much later was published as, uh, as a dialectica paper by Gödel. Uh, and uh, he mentioned also the third idea that perhaps one could use uh, model logic as a way of proving uh, consistency of model logic as extending the uh, the means of classical logic, as a, uh, as a, let's say, that would allow us to prove uh, consistency. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, this idea has really materialized in the future. Uh, however, uh, uh, the intimate connection between probability and modality is, uh, was of course uh, picked up later by philosophers such as Quine, Montague, and George Boulos, who uh, really thought about using probability as a first mathematically mathematical model of necessity. So uh, as a contrast to purely philosophical ideas, what necessity can mean, uh, probability provides a rigorous model. May model not correspond to what one would expect of real necessity operations uh, uh, from one or other point of view. Nevertheless, uh, that idea attracted uh, the attention. That, that was a verse of, of uh, probability logic uh, in the, let's say, late 50s, early 60s. Independently of that, I guess the Italian school led by uh, Roberto Magari came to uh, considerations of consistency as an operator acting on the algebra of sentences, say Lindenbaum algebra of piano arithmetic. So uh, Mayari was interested in this universal algebra approach and studying the properties he, apparently it was quite uh, interesting for him that this algebra satisfies certain new uh, identities representing again, Loeb's theorem or Gödel's second incompleteness theorem in formalized form so he initiated this, uh, uh, this movement of uh, uh, probability logic study in Italy. And then uh, by that time already, there were some other ideas how to use uh, model logic. For example, probability logic uh, was considered as a kind of study of self-referential phenomena. Uh, certainly that motivated uh, people like Dick de Jong and then Craig Smorinsky and Magari himself. Uh, 
who called what we now call Magari algebras, he called them diagonalizable algebras because that seemed to him the, the principal feature of, of, of this. And then of course, uh, all that early development culminated in, in the uh, theorem by Robert Soloway who finally characterized the, uh, the logic of probability for any reasonable sound arithmetical theory, uh, let's say containing piano arithmetic or as we know now containing elementary arithmetic. So this gives you uh, uh, all such theories have the same uh, logic of probability, which uh, is exemplified by the system of Gödel and Gluck. Maybe I should also remark that the system itself was uh, formulated for the first time by philosophers and Tim Smiley was uh, the one who uh, is referred to in this, uh, in this regard. So he was the one uh, in uh, the tradition of, of Quine, Montague and Boulos uh, mentioned, mentioned above. Okay. Uh, after Solaray theorem, uh, there of course was uh, the very quick development of probability logic in various directions. So people studied many forces joined in, including groups in Netherlands and, and in Russia, and, uh, and also uh, in US. And George Bulls continued to be a proponent of this discipline for a number of years. However, uh, uh, one feature was clear for, from all this study. That Soloway theorem is very robust. So it holds for practically any theory. And this means that all theories uh, that people in proof theory can be interested in uh, containing enough arithmetic or able to do self-reference, they share one and the same, one and the same probability logic. So is it a blessing or a curse? Certainly when one uh, encounters in mathematics such robustness results, one feels that the right notion is being found, has been found, and that this is a good motivation to study this notion. On the other hand, if the goal was, I and mean, eventually people were starting to think what uh, to use this, uh, this whole uh, methodology or uh, apparatus on probability logics to uh, to study formal systems, to study more concrete formal systems. And then this is rather uh, a curse because it, it shows that features that we normally are interested in, in the study of, of various concrete uh, formal systems such as piano arithmetic, second order arithmetic, or even set theory, uh, they are not sensitive to, uh, probability logic is not sensitive to to drastic changes of strengths, for example, or expressive possibilities of all these uh, languages. So something needs to be done if we want to, to really apply probability logic to derive interesting facts about concrete formal systems. Uh, and uh, slowly there was a direction, uh, there was a, uh, let's say, movement in that direction. What has become clear is that reflection principles namely statements uh, generalizing consistency assertion uh, to higher levels of logical complexity. In fact, set theoretic reflection principles are in fact akin to arithmetical reflection principles, although of, of a very different strength, are useful. So such reflection principles have been uh, around in proof theory for many years and they're proven their usefulness in many, in many proof theoretic applications. So it turns out so that uh, simultaneously these uh, same schemata or objects, uh, reflection principles uh, lead to new kinds of modalities whose interaction can be described in probability logic style on the one hand. And on the other hand, uh, these more developed, more uh, expressive probability logics are actually linked much more tightly to the to the problems to the properties of systems uh, that we deal with uh, in proof theory. So, in particular, these logics provide can provide ordinal notation system and and proof theoretic analysis of various classes of theories, and this area is being explored rather 
systematically by now. So uh, this is a background of my talk. And I would like to uh, uh, introduce, uh, uh, to say a few words, why we are uh, talking about strictly positive uh, probability logics uh, <laughs> now. So uh, strictly positive uh, logics, I will give a formal uh, definition in, in a couple of, couple of slides later. But basically, these are fragments of model logics where we weaken not the model part, but rather the classical logic part. So uh, these are logics uh, that deal with essentially conjunction and uh, one layer of implications in the, in the axiomatization. So that's a rather weak uh, propositional, propositional logics, but with equipped with rather strong modalities. So it turns out that such Fragments are typically much simpler uh, than standard model logics that we deal with. In particular, strictly positive fragments of uh, standard model logics uh, are almost always polytime decidable, whereas the logics themselves can be much more complex, typically P space complete. However, there is additional uh, motivation for the study of these systems, namely, uh, firstly, uh, they're sufficiently expressive, so they're really enough uh, to have a strictly positive logic to describe interesting properties of, of your uh, of formal theories, uh, and they're sufficient for these proof theory applications that I mentioned. Uh, and moreover, another feature is that since the language is so much weaker than classical propositional language, uh, they allow for more uh, non-traditional interpretations, and in, in, in particular interpretation that cannot in principle be captured by the standard framework of model logic. And I will uh, demonstrate several such uh, cases later in my talk. So in fact, they are more flexible. Uh, being weaker, they are more flexible and adaptable to treating other operations other than consistency as modalities, and that, uh, that is meaningful in, in various contexts. Okay, now what is a strictly positive uh, language? Strictly positive model formulas are uh, generated from variables, constant, true, using just conjunction, and uh, several modalities denoted diamonds. So they, rather than corresponding to box probability, we would like to represent by these formalisms uh, consistency assertions or reflection principles or other uh, operations or other operators that are more similar to consistency. Okay, so these are strictly positive model formulas. So positive formulas in addition, uh, what, what one usually calls positive in model logic may involve also boxes and disjunctions. We don't have this. Uh, uh, these uh, connection connectives here. However, uh, uh, it, it would be really very weak if we only had these strictly positive formulas. What we are actually interested in are implications of the form A implies B, where A and B are such formulas. So uh, part of that formula is still negative, as you can see, but in a restricted manner. Uh, strictly positive fragment of a model logic L is the set of all implications A implies B such that A and B are strictly positive. So that's a very natural definition. But strictly positive logics in general need not always have the form, this is a kind of warning, uh, of a strictly positive fragment of some standard model logics. They can be more general. So strictly positive logics are consequence relations on the set of strictly positive model formulas in general. Usually we assume that these strictly positive logics satisfy some minimal uh, principles, axioms and rules. So we formulate the basic calculus, strictly positive calculus, which I denote K plus because it corresponds in, in, in this sense to the standard uh, model logic K. Uh, so instead of implication, we write here a turnstile to stress that this is not a binary connective, but rather uh, external external application that can only be applied once. So for this sequence of the form 
A turnstile B, we postulate the usual axioms saying that this is a pre-order, so transitivity or syllogism rule that top is a uh, truth is the topmost element and that A implies A. The usual axioms for conjunction, so nothing strange here. So that's classical rules for conjunction. And the only monotonicity rule for, for diamonds. So if A implies B, then diamond A implies diamond B. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the basic uh, uh, logic K plus. Uh, it satisfies uh, uh, the standard properties one can expect in this case, in particular substitution property, but also positive replacement, which is somewhat more general than the usual uh, rule of uh, replacement of equivalent subformulas. Since here the context C is also strictly positive, uh, even implications can be so uh, any uh, if you have uh, proved an implication A implies B, then A can be replaced by B in a strictly positive context. So that's uh, our calculus. Uh, to uh, study uh, uh, these systems, one can also involve uh, all kinds of standard types of semantics. The most general one is algebraic semantics. And then one can see that this is corresponds to semi lattices uh, equipped with a number of monotone operations on them. So these are not necessarily Boolean algebras, but semi lattices. However, more convenient are, of course, the Kripke semantics. Uh, however, here we have something, something nice happens. Uh, we can always. Uh, deal with in some sense to, to decide derivability, for example, one usually deals with not all possible Kripke models of a specific form, but rather one uh, particular Kripke model. So how it works can be demonstrated by this simple example. So to every strictly positive formula A, we can associate its minimal Kripke model. So any strictly positive formula can be satisfied on a finite Kripke model. And among them, there is the simplest one, which looks simply like a parse tree of that formula uh, viewed as a Kripke model. So we start from the bottom. So our formula here in this example is this big conjunction. You see that Q is the variable Q here is at the root. So we point Q here and there are conjunction of two sub formulas beginning with diamonds. So we have two successors of that node. One of them has P, the left one and the right one has nothing because there is no variables claimed under the second box, uh, second diamond. And then above it, we have again, two nodes representing these, these two formats. So that's uh, how these canonical trees uh, may look like, typical. So the size of them is the size of the formula. And then using these canonical trees, one can uh, give a criterion for derivability in this logic K plus, very simple logic. So uh, firstly, a sequent A implies B is provable in K plus, even only if uh, the formula B is true at the root of the canonical tree for the formula A. So instead of quantifying over all possible Kripke models here, we have just one determined by A. And it suffices. And it suffices. Uh, second part is also helpful, namely, model checking problem here is also quite easy and natural. Namely, uh, if one is interested in the question whether formula B, strictly positive formula, holds at the root of a given Kripke model M, this holds even only if there is a root preserving homomorphism of the tree. T of B into M. So the mapping which preserves all the relations from T of B into M. So in principle, we can work with this canonical trees and the problem of checking derivability becomes uh, because a problem of checking whether there is such a homomorphism or not. And an obvious polynomial algorithm solves this problem. So K plus is polytime decidable. And one can uh, by similar 
some uh, equally simple way, one can also show that this is precisely the strictly positive fragment of the logic uh, model logic K. So that was just a, a slide just to, to show you how to deal with these uh, strictly positive logics and that in general, this is uh, not difficult at all. So this is model logic very much simplified in its uh, basics. So uh, let's get uh, uh, somewhat further. Uh, a normal strictly positive logic as is uh, by definition a set of sequence closed under the rules of K plus and the rules of substitution. So that's what I called uh, strictly positive logics. But if we assume that they're containing K plus, we call them normal. And uh, of course, uh, if one takes a normal model logic, its strictly positive fragment will be normal. And here are some strictly positive counterparts of the standard model logic axioms. The four axiom transitivity can be written in, in this strictly positive fo format without a difficulty. T axiom similarly, uh, S5 axiom, even though it's not the standard uh, formulation of S5, it's close to be so. And one can show that indeed, these are the axiomatizations of strictly positive counterparts of uh, standard model logic. However, there is this early result by uh, Yevgeny Dashkov, who, sure, who was given the problem by to determine the strictly positive fragment of good log logic. And he gave uh, the answer. Uh, which is that strictly positive fragment of good loop coincide with the logic K4 plus. So it's just K4, K plus this axiom four. So Loeb's axiom is not visible in strictly positive logic at all. So good loop and K4 both map to, uh, to, the, same, to the same system K4 plus. So, uh, it seems that we have uh, stripped the probability logic of its most essential axiom. Nevertheless, uh, uh, the life remains in this area. So another example where it was not easy to co calculate the strictly positive fragment of, of a standard model logic was this system uh, GL.3 or the logic of linear uh, irreflexive finite frames or the logic of converse well ordered. It was in fact uh, featured also in the or um, in the uh, paper by Soloway, where he treated set theoretic uh, <laughs> uh, um, modalities in model in probability logic style. So it does have a probability like interpretation. Uh, related to set theory. However, uh, here, uh, the answer to strictly positive, uh, it's strictly positive fragment can still be nicely axiomatized. And here is the, the axiom. You see that here, the number of variables uh, that are used is more than the in the original traditional axiom for linearity. Here, only two variables, here, the three variables. That already indicates some difficulties that could arise in, in finding these uh, these principles, nevertheless, this has been done in the uh, work by Misha Svetlovsky rather recently. Uh, that this one is uh, axiomatization, and it's polytime decidable as well. So this can be done in this case. Uh, in general, however, uh, it's not the case that strictly positive logics are always decidable in polynomial time, or even decidable because one can easily reduce uh, the universal problem, let's say, for um, semi to uh, the quality problem for semi two systems or string rewriting systems to the problem of uh, derivability problem for certain for certain strictly positive logics, namely, Suppose we have a, a semi to a system formulated in an alphabet sigma finite alphabet, then one can translate each word in this alphabet as the following model formula. Pick a select, select a specific uh, propositional variable P, and then to every letter there corresponds some modality 
of diamond type. And there one can formulate from each rewrite rule, one can formulate a logic axiom. And then it turns out that uh, these two systems, the original rewriting system and the logic generated from it are tightly related. So say they derive the same uh, implications of the, which are translations of words. And then uh, you obtain undecidability in this way. So not everything is as, uh, so they're not totally, uh, use, uh, totally simple, these strictly positive logics. And this one, uh, this, on this slide, I mentioned another problem that uh, is interesting in connection with the general theory of this uh, strictly positive logics, namely the, the problem of having a model campaign. So we call a normal model logic L a strictly positive, uh, uh, a model companion of a strictly positive logic P if, if P is just the, the fragment of L. Uh, of course, there is an interesting question, which strictly positive logics have uh, model campaigns? Uh, and as I mentioned, not everyone has. Uh, the answer here is uh, uh, rather clear. And it follows from the so-called Salquist theorem that P has a model companion, even only if P is Kripke complete. So complete with respect to a class of Kripke frames. Uh, in principle, this is not, an, uh, not at all an obvious uh, statement. However, from some prominent result in model logic, it does follow. Uh, people working in uh, description logic actually came to the study of the strictly positive model logics uh, earlier and independently than, than people working in, in probability logic. And uh, they uh, uh, gave some account of this problem and in fact showed that it is undecidable if a finitely axiomatized, axiomatized strictly positive logic has a model companion or equivalent is Kripke complete. So, uh, in general, by from a logic, finitely axiomatized logic, you cannot determine whether it is complete or not. Uh, there are many other results in that direction which go rather deep. So, in fact, the theory of strictly positive uh, systems is um, not at all so well explored. Uh, there are still things to do uh, there. However, there is one question which uh, seems to be rather intriguing. Uh, so one can sh easily see that among all the, so suppose a strictly positive logic P does have, is Kripke complete and does have model companions. Uh, then it follows essentially from uh, Zorn's lemma that there always should be maximal ones. So among, uh, among all the companions, it should be maximal. Uh, model companions. Uh, however, we don't know any particular examples of, of, such, of such companions. For example, uh, open question is to, de to describe one and in principle all model companions or maximal model companions of this uh, strictly positive logic K4. Uh, we know that Gödel-Löw logic is just a model companions, and for some time we didn't know whether it was maximal or not. Uh, then Svetlovsky again showed that it is not maximal. We found a series of extensions of uh, Gödel-Löw logic, which are companions of K4+. Plus. Uh, however, uh, it's still unclear whether, whether uh, uh, one can explicitly axiomatized at least one maximal model companion, or for example, whether there is one maximal model companion or there are many different maximal model companions. This question is wide open uh, as of today. So that's uh, the kind of questions model magicians uh, dealt with in, in different contexts many times, uh, most notably in considering the map from Gödel embedding of 
extensions of in intuitionistic logic into extensions of S4. And there, there is this block Esakia theorem, which shows that there is a very good match between these maximal companions of intuitionistic logics and the logics themselves. Uh, uh, however, here we don't know anything and suspect maybe that there is, the situation is not that good. Okay, now the second part of my talk, I will deal with uh, probability interpretations of these systems. So how to put them to good use. So in standard probability logic, uh, propositional variables uh, denote arithmetical sentences or sentences in some language containing arithmetical. And modality denotes, uh, diamond denotes the function mapping a sentence A to the sentence expressing the consistency of, of that sentence A over say piano rhythm. So uh, in strictly positive logic, we are able to deal with the more general interpretations which turn out to be very useful. Uh, firstly, propositional variables now need not only denote sentences but may denote infinitely axiomatized schemata or theories. And to such theories, uh, we can, we know that consistency operation, consistency formula applies not only to finitely axiomatized theories, but to arbitrary recursively axiomatized theories. And diamond here also uh, may denote more or less any monotone operator uh, acting on the set of all theories. Uh, however, there are some technical details that uh, one needs to take care of to formulate it in a, this interpretation in a rigorous way. So here we here it is, here it comes. So uh, I, uh, so we call a Gödelian theory, essentially what Said uh, had in his talk, uh, namely uh, recursively enumerable extension of basic, uh, some basic fragment of arithmetic such as I delta zero X plus sigma one collection to avoid some problems. Uh, it is not really necessary to, to have collection here, but convenient. Uh, but a Gödelian theory also has additional uh, data attached to it, namely a sigma one probability predicate formula specific sigma one formula expressing probability uh, in that theory. So it's similar like uh, in Pfefferman approach where we had a numeration defining the primitive recursive formula defining the, the set of axioms of that theory. Uh, here it's sufficient to, to deal with a probability predicate. And then having this data, uh, one can uh, consider the set of all Gödelian theories extending EA. Uh, one can consider a natural pre-order on that set, uh, represented here by this less than EA relation. Namely, we say that S is stronger than T, if and only if uh, S, prove, S contains T provably in the minimal system in, in EA. So the important uh, point here is that not only we claim that uh, here the extensional inclusion uh, like theory S contains theory T, but rather that this inclusion is also provable. And therefore we needed to have probability predicates. We essentially deal with probability predicates rather than with theories themselves. Uh, however, it defines uh, uh, natural pre-order on, uh, on that set, set of all such theories, and we can factor out modulo the equivalence relation and obtain, uh, in fact, uh, a lattice, but we here are interested in the semi-lattice, where uh, the lower bound in the semi-lattice is, of course, determined by the order that we have, but it can be seen to correspond to the natural idea of taking union of two Gödelian theories equipped with a natural probability operation. So if one takes theory S and theory T, uh, each with its own probability predicate and 
formulates uh, the probability in a, 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 in the union of these theories in a natural way that will be precisely correspond to the lower bound in this in this lattice. The top element is the weakest theory, which is E A in this case. Okay, so that's the lattice of Gödelian extensions. And then we have various operations acting on it, uh, most uh, notably the operations defined by reflection schema. So the, the standard uh, sigma n reflection principle or uniform sigma n reflection principle uh, is a statement expressing in a arithmetized form that every uh, pi n plus one sentence provable in T is true. Then consistency assertion for T just corresponds to R zero of T. And uh, every such formula induces an operation on that structure of series, mapping a theory T to extension of EA by that specific schema defined by N. And then we obtain already not just a semi-lattice, but semi-lattice equipped with these, uh, with these uh, monotone, in fact, operations diamond n for each n. So reflection principles are viewed here not just as specific uh, elements, but rather uniformly as maps on that structure. And once one encounters this, uh, the natural question is, what are the, the laws governing these operations? What are the identities of this structure? And that's precisely where the strictly positive language comes in because uh, uh, one can view the strictly positive implication. So uh, implication uh, in the context where you have a semi lattice or conjunction can be replaced by can be expressed by equivalence and equivalence by implication. It's somewhat convenient proof theoretically to deal with implications. So we, rather than with identities, deal with inequalities, but uh, it's essentially the same. So here is a logic describing the identities of this structure. It's called RC for reflection calculus. And uh, it's a strictly positive logic, normal logic with modalities uh, diamond N and its rules are, are these ones. So the rules of K4 that we have seen already for each of the modalities, uh, monotonicity principles, diamond N is stronger than diamond M, reflection principles behave in this way. And then axiom three is reminiscent of axiom S5 in strictly positive format that we have seen, but with different N and M. N should be bigger than M. And that's a key feature of that, of that system. So uh, uh, all these uh, axioms represent uh, uh, the obvious identities or more or less obvious identities that hold in this structure. So uh, Evgeny Dashkov, uh, in somewhat different formulation, studied this system, uh, pioneered, so to say, the study of this system, and showed that, in fact, uh, RC is a model companion of Japaridze's polymodal probability logic, presented in, uh, defined by Japaridze in 1986, uh, together with arithmetical completeness proof, and uh, featured in the book by Bulos on, uh, on the probability logic. So here RC is, turns out to be uh, the axiomatization of strictly positive uh, fragment of that logic. RC is polytime decidable and enjoys uh, the finite model property. Moreover, since we already knew from Japaridze that GLP was arithmetically complete, we automatically get this completeness here. So to say for free that uh, show that such a formula is provable in RC, even only if the identity A less than B holds in, in that structure GPA. I must say here that this result holds for extensions of PA. We don't really know uh, an arithmetical completeness proof that would work over elementary arithmetic for Japanese logic, but that's a technical, technical point, uh, somewhat annoying that is well known to the people working in that, in that area. So not everything in, in uh, Japanese proof 
allows to push it down as, as far as EA. Okay. Uh, what is also interesting about this uh, system RC is it's a closed or variable free fragment. Uh, if one considers the variable free formulas of that logic, again, modulus equivalence in, in RC zero, uh, they have a natural ordering relation. A implies N consistency or N reflection for uh, B implies N reflection for A. And that's that will be an irreflexive by Gödel's incompleteness theorem order. What can be shown uh, here is that, in fact, this ordering for n equals zero is isomorphic to the well ordering epsilon mode. So it's not as simple as one would uh, prima facie uh, think. Uh, knowing these strictly positive logics are very simple. So it gives, in fact, so this isomorphism, in fact, shows that one can view ordinals up to epsilon naught as a specific variable free model formulas. And that's one of the key features that allows them to build on top of that the proof theoretic analysis of piano arithmetic and its fragments, because uh, Induction is related to reflection, as is well known. So induction can be trans induction schema that can be translated into reflection principles, and those can be reduced by a certain mechanism, which is well known to, to uh, iterations of reflections of uh, smaller of smaller index, which which then uh, works very nicely in this case. So uh, so all this uh, works in strictly positive uh, logic. Uh, now we come to, uh, to other examples of uh, other examples of proof theoretic interpretations of uh, strictly positive modalities. So the first such example is the standard uniform, full uniform reflection schema for Gödelian theory given Gödelian theory S. So one can equally well consider uh, this RFN of S as a theory axiomatized by each of uh, formulas Rn of S for n for all, where n ranges for all natural numbers. It's uh, recursively, though not finitely axiomatized schema. Therefore, it's rather hopeless to try to interpret it in terms of the standard uh, probability logic approach. So it doesn't correspond to a single sentence. However, here one can treat it R omega as a legal uh, modality as well. In fact, uh, it gives natural extension of the uh, reflection algebra that we considered by one more operation, uh, which satisfies uh, identities um, uh, written here. So that's uh, arithmetical completeness theorem for this, uh, for this algebra. So the only new, essentially new axiom that appears in this context is this axiom two. And I gave it for the simple reason that it's very interesting from modern logical point of view, because in the axiom written in, in terms of box uh, in the standard model logic language of, of box, uh, it is equivalent to something like A uh, or P implies box P. It's a, an analog of, of completeness rather than soundness uh, axiom. And of course, we know that together with all the rest, it would be inconsistent to add something like this to, uh, to model logics. Uh, it will yield systems which uh, are equivalent to adding box falsity to uh, to let's say uh, the system K. So something trivializes here. Uh, in strictly positive context, nothing like that happens. And this is a very, uh, let's say, <laughs> standard, uh, uh, not inconsistent and not, uh, not trivializing uh, strictly, positive, uh, strictly positive logic. Uh, the fact that it happened in, uh, in uh, standard model uh, logic language reflects uh, the fact that this system does not have 
uh, does not have a modal campaign. It's not representable as a fragment of any normal model logic. So as you see, uh, even rather natural arithmetical operations yield here strictly positive systems, which are not in that, uh, which are essentially strictly positive. So our C omega has no model companion. And it is, it is complete with respect to a suitable class of nice class of finite Kripke models. I stress the word models rather than frames. So frame complexity here is uh, frame, uh, frame completeness is not available. It is still poly time decided. So nothing bad happens with this logic. Uh, however, similar features we can we encounter in many other natural operations uh, uh, that we natural operations that we encounter in in uh, proof theory of arithmetic. For example, uh, transfinitely iterated consistency assertions. So if uh, if alpha is a limit ordinal, uh, then usually con alpha of S is a theory axiomatized by all iterations of consistency beta times for beta smaller than alpha, then this is not a finite theory. And again, its logic is not, uh, it's, it can be treated in strictly positive, but it's essentially not model. Local reflection schema, also known to be not finitely axiomatizable, not representable in model logic, in probability logic standard way, but in strictly positive, very well so. And uh, two more operations, which are even more interesting in, in this regard, namely this pi one, pi n conservativity operation can be described as assigning to a given theory mapping a theory S to the theory axiomatized by all of its pi n plus one consequences. For example, pi, pi two of piano arithmetic will be the set of pi two consequences of piano arithmetic, which is, as we know, for example, is axiomatized by Gigorchik, uh, the totality of Gigorchik functions up to epsilon naught, or by some other uh, interesting pi two statements provable in PA, which exhausts the, the strength of it. Uh, yet another is a modality is uh, due to Albert Visser, it's encountered in some of his writings on interpretability, uh, where one can associate with the system S the set of all consistency assertions for finite subsystems of S. If S is finite, this behaves like a consistency assertion. If S is reflexive, it does not add anything, but in general, it may or may, may not add something to S. So this is a kind of mixture of finite and infinite, uh, infinite case, which is, uh, I think, has a should have a specific uh, and rather interesting uh, model behavior, but nobody has studied it uh, or axiomatized it uh, seriously so far. In fact, about these cases, we don't know uh, any arithmetical completeness results except for the first one mentioned and the second one. I say uh, we really know, but it needs to be written down. Written down. So uh, let me uh, treat very quickly the iterations of these reflection operations. So here is the uh, definition of iterated modalities. One operate, iterates this operator in a natural way. At stage omega one gets this uh, union of all the previous iterations. And it's also, uh, the smallest, let's say, uh, theory of that kind mentioned here in item two. For example, what is the logic of diamond and diamond omega? This we essentially know. Uh, uh, the answer is given by that system written down here, which is somewhat similar to the so-called logic of Parikh probability, uh, which was uh, studied in a, a paper by Per Lindstrom of 1996. So it's, it's rather similar to that. Uh, there is a, a Kripke completeness proof 
which is uh, written down in the coursework by uh, uh, my student uh, Tatiana Yakabovskaya, third year student. And uh, uh, essentially, the arithmetical completeness theorem here is, I think, is easy, and we uh, should <laughs> jointly complete this paper. Uh, well, in the coming in the coming months. However, uh, for example, even for the case of local reflection, if one denotes this modality by diamond star, so diamond is consistency and diamond star local reflection, then we know some, some new model logic axioms that hold here under this interpretation, but we don't know whether it's arithmetically complete or not. So this is uh, an open case. Uh, yet another open case uh, has been studied in the context of theories of truth definition by me and Evgeny Dashkov. Uh, so if T is a truth predicate satisfying, satisfying uh, commutation conditions for truth over some theory like piano arithmetic, uh, one can uh, formulate the global reflection principle for it, and one can formulate the uh, uniform reflection for it that that I introduced earlier. Uh, then the joint logic of bimodal logic of these two operations seems to uh, have interesting new uh, interconnections between these two, uh, the two operations, but it's difficult to characterize it completely. So that's yet another arithmetical completeness result, which is wide open here. Although we do have a reduction of that problem to some other logics. Uh, which I think may be, uh, may be also studied. Uh, finally, a few words about treating conservativity modalities. So, uh, of course, conservativity is a big, was a big topic and still is a topic in, in probability logic, and it initiated, was initiated in, in the works of uh, the people mentioned here. And Biraducci and Shavukov showed, for example, uh, characterized the the interpretability logic of, of piano arithmetic, uh, which was a big breakthrough for finite sequential theories. Albert Visser characterized it based on the previous work by de Jong and Feldman, and with, with many other people contributing. Here, uh, there, the context is that we treat interpretability as a binary modality, A uh, triangle B, uh, which makes uh, the context on the one hand very expressive and interesting, on the other hand uh, complicated. So these interpretability logics are more complicated than standard uh, model logics. In, and of course it's difficult to deal with it in strictly positive context. What we have is uh, if one takes the most straightforward approach, one would introduce this interpretability uh, or uh, conservativity as external-like consequence relations. So one can uh, devise uh, formal systems not with one turn style, but with many turn styles, which would correspond to interpretive or conservativity or interpretability. Uh, um, but this is not a modality. Uh, a nicer approach, which allows to deal with higher conservation, represent higher conservation relations between theories, is, is this, one, uh, one can introduce new kinds of modalities which are, uh, which I mentioned before this, pi n fragment modalities. Uh, consider, interpret nabla n of A as uh, the theory axiomatized by all pi n consequences of the theory A. So then this uh, conserv conservation result can be just translated as this, uh, turnstile nabla and B. Uh, then the question is, what are the logics of these nablas? Uh, firstly, one can remark that this language is rather expressive and one can express, for example, transfinite iterations up to epsilon naught, epsilon naught in the, in the uh, lattice of Gerlin extensions of elementary arithmetic. So for every ordinal, one can write down a formula in this language where which expresses alpha's iteration of, uh, of diamond N. So that makes it interesting for, for all these projects. But also conservation and reflection are somehow 
dual properties that one all often considers simultaneously. So using iteration of reflection principles, one proves conservation results. So uh, if your language is able to express both conservation and iteration, it makes uh, the context, the whole context somehow nice and round. Um, however, so the, these are the principles or I would say the obvious principles that we know. There are some mixed principles for diamonds and for nablas here. However, what we lack is, uh, so what we know is uh, the characterization of the variable free fragment together with arithmetical completeness, completeness for variable free logics, but that's cheap. So to say that's relatively cheap. It's pure model logic story. However, arithmetical completeness theorem, which is conjectured here, uh, is still an open question. So it's not so easy to uh, prove arithmetical completeness. One obviously needs to adapt the arithmetical completeness proofs for uh, interpretability logics that we know some of which we know, uh, uh, or several of which uh, we know, uh, but still um, we do have here, not only pi one, but also pi n for, for all n. So all this is rather uh, strongly generalized uh, in that regard. But still there is this conjecture which is waiting for a solution. Uh, I would like to conclude with uh, thanks to the people who were implicitly or explicitly present among the results uh, mentioned in this talk. Uh, so there is this, uh, over the last 10 or more years, several people contributed, including Jost Jost and David Fernandez and Fyodor Pachomos and James Walsh, and a number of uh, our students uh, uh, here as well. So uh, this is an ongoing project, which I hope will, will see some interesting results in the future. Thank you very much. And these are the list of papers uh, that uh, in which I participated in in, uh, in the recent years. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much.